in this video, I will be testing the effects of radiation on these two types of plants. Squash zucchini and Minnesota midget melon. That's called musk melon anyways. Not sure if that's proper. Anyways. Now we, <clears throat> my family will be growing these in our garden. And yes, we will be eating them. No, radiation does not make food radioactive. But it can hurt the DNA. It should not cause any harm to ingest them. And I will be doing a comprehensive taste test on these two foods. Now our main source of radiation here will be the cesium-137 source. 10 microcuries. <clears throat> trying to focus on it. It's completely legal. <clears throat> made in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Now, it's legal under exempt quantities, which means up to 10 microcuries any person can own without a license or NRC regulations. Now, if you want one of these, just look up Spectrum Techniques, and there will be a variety of isotopes you can buy. Mine is cesium-137. 10 microcuries, half-life of 30.07 years, made in April 2011. It's now June 2012, so it's only about a year or so old. Just over a year, actually. And with some more radiation being supplied by a piece of carnitite uranium ore, a thorium lantern mantle, and it will be surrounded by a stash, my, uh, not stash, my collection of other radioactive items, primarily being some other uranium ore and some radium watches. And it will be in my basement, in a lead box, and that lead box will be surrounded by more shielding. Now to measure the sources, now you can see this one being a good few inches away from the open probe, beta shields open. On times one, we get over two, ah uh, sorry, about two millibrunkins per hour, just over 100 counts per minute. It's kind of jumping up and down right now. Alright, now to measure the sources. Alright, the CDV700 is on at the scale times 100. Source is about a foot away, we're not really seeing any activity. Pick it up. I'm going to turn it on the side first. It's sealed inside a plastic epoxy, so none of it can leak out. Alright, so we'll measure the bottom side first. See on times 100 with the beta and with the beta shield open, it quickly maxes out, so over 3,000 counts per minute. So this is 10 microcuries, so it means in total the whole source is emitting 3... Uh, 370,000 particles of radiation per second of both beta and gamma rays. Now, let's close the beta shield and try that again. Alright, times 100 still. And it looks like we're at about 20 millirunkins per hour. So just over 10,000 counts per minute with the beta shield closed. Now also something interesting, if I reopen the beta shield, from what the company says, this plate here that has the writing on it is made out of steel. It is magnetic if I put a magnet to it, which I'm not going to do right now. So now when I turn it around, now the beta shield is open and you see it has less of a reading than when the beta shield was closed. So, under 10,000 counts per minute. And if you look, you know, you can't even really see the band of where the metal is. Kind of interesting. I don't know if they have any more material right there. Now, it is rather safe for me to be handling this. Like I said, there can be no contamination gets out, and it's only a short period of time, plus my hands will take less damage because the cells are in my hands are simpler than the cells inside my torso with my or with all my vital organs. Alright, so also to just keep it in its container, I will ha be having it upside down like this. Now to put it back inside its sled shielding so it doesn't make uh, mess up with any of the other sources I'm about to measure. Alright, here I have the thorium lantern mantle. These were made not too long ago, probably 20 or 30 years ago is when they stopped production of them. 
I use thorium to <clears throat> because it burns very brightly in a lantern. Now I believe they replace it with the ytterbium metal instead of thorium metal. Alright, so now to measure it. We're at times one. The other source is very far away. Alright, so we just maxed 300 at x1. Moving down to x10. I'll let it zero for a moment before putting the source back on the probe. Sorry about the glare. Alright, so it's right about zero. So we're going to put it back on now. As you can see, I'm not folding it, just holding it over the probe. So we're looking at about 600 counts per minute right now, just under. Now if I fold it, the reading should go a bit higher. Again, we're on X10. Alright, so I folded it, and now we're at about 1,000 counts per minute. The needle might not look like it, but it's moving slightly higher. Alright, that should be good enough for reading. Now, to close the beta shield. And I'll put it back on times one. It's zeroed. Now, let's see what we get. Alright, so we're getting about 1 milliroken per hour. 0.1 milliroken per hour. Kind of seems to be jumping randomly. Radioactivity is a bit random, so that's not too uncommon. Now again, if we fold it. It's jumping a little bit higher than it did last time. Actually, decently higher now. Sorry if my camera's kind of shaky, I'm filming with an iPod. Alright, so as you can see, it jumps around a lot more when we use it folded on top of the probe, only measuring gamma radiation. Onto the uranium more. Alright, here I have a piece of carnitite, form of uranium more. Carnitite grows on top of a host mineral rock. Alright, so time to measure it. Open the beta shield. Oops, that's not open all the way. Put it on top. And you see the meter max out almost instantly. So now let's put it on times 10. Move our source back over. And you see it's stable right above the 1000 count per minute mark. Alright, now to close the beta shield. Very close. Set it back to times one. Whoops. Quit trying to escape. My guy gunner now. I said quit trying to escape. Thumbs up for escaping Geiger counters. Alright. So now we're getting just over 1 milli Runkin per hour of gamma radiation. Sorry, 0 0.1 milli Runkins. It's kind of fluctuating up and down. That tends to happen. On to our next source. Sorry, not our next source. Um, I'm going to show you the setup. Hold on. Alright, so the setup here. First we have the cesium-137. 
10 micro carry source and you might notice I have it upside down in its container as I already showed you the top of the container blocks all the beta radiation and the majority not the majority a decent amount of gamma radiation now if I have a, this plastic itself that it's in will block about half the beta radiation I'm guessing it maxes out my CDV700 so I'm not entirely sure what percentage of it it's blocking I'm just going to roughly say half now I'll put the seeds on top of it directly over that center now to place the thorium lantern mantle on top Let's see center that put that over there okay only have one hand to film with now put that over there Looks kind of messy, but I'll reposition it. I'm just showing you the relative setup. Now close the lid. Also, something I should mention. Alright, so even the. Alright, take a look. This is a lead box. Decently thick. Say about half a centimeter. Now, if I put the Geiger counter right above where the source is. On times one, it just about maxes it out through the lead. So this will with extra shielding of rocks and bricks on top of it.